Thanks for watching NBC 12 on your side. We have a cold front now poised just to the west of us, a leading edge of a very cold blast of Arctic air. This front will come charging across the state by tomorrow morning, and that's what's triggering the light precipitation, mainly rain tonight. It's uh, freezing rain in some locations, though. Who is that fella? <laughs> he has a lot more hair than I have now, I know that. Hi, I'm Jim Duncan, and we're here live in the new NBC 12 Weather Center. A lot has changed over the years, obviously. Back then, we just drew on the maps with crayons and such. But tonight and during the next half hour, we're going to uh, tell you about uh, some of these changes that we've seen in uh, forecasting, not only with the equipment that we have here at the office, but also changes at the National Weather Service in terms of forecasting severe weather. Plus, we're going to offer you uh, some safety tips for you and your family in case severe weather might strike your home. But first, we're going to uh, take a look back. Tomorrow marks an important anniversary, in fact, an emotional anniversary for the community of Petersburg. It was five years ago tomorrow that that devastating tornado tore through Petersburg. And uh, that tornado marked the beginning of several unusual weather events. Tracy Capps has more. Here, and then I just heard like this loud explosion, so I just ran in here and just ducked down. Denise Leonowitz knows firsthand just how dangerous a tornado can be. Five years ago, she was in the upper floor of this Petersburg building when a tornado propelled her two stories down. I was just thinking to myself, don't let me die. <laughs> I remember saying that like three times. Leonowitz was one of the lucky ones. She lived to tell her story. Four others did not. We got helicopters coming in. Let's go. That day was August 6, 1993. A tornado tore through the Tri-Cities. This is what it did to the Walmart store in Colonial Heights. Petersburg Old Town District also took a beating. And who could forget the destruction on Pocahontas Island? The price tag for this twister, $50 million, and a lifetime of scars that may never heal for some. And I went up uh, toward the uh, Ford place up there, and the windows were just all over the place, and the side of the buildings fell. It's just, I never think that something like this would happen in Petersburg. That was 1993. This was two years later. We were in the house, and all of a sudden we heard this rushing of water. We have a ri river right outside, and we were real scared. We didn't know what was going on and anything. So we looked outside, and we had some guests over. Our friends, and they're about real young, and they're real scared, and, and we all started crying, and, and the water started coming in the front porch. Central Virginia saw some of its worst flooding in years. Nine inches of pounding rain turned people's backyards into rivers. Madison County hadn't seen this much water since Hurricanes Agnes and Camille a quarter of a century ago. It was one dramatic rescue after another. Folks were clinging to trees until they were pulled to safety. Six months later, Central Virginians were being rescued from this, the blizzard of 96. Central Virginia was buried under nearly two feet of snow, more in some places. This was one storm that certainly went down in the history books and one that some folks are still talking about today. As if Mother Nature hadn't caused enough destruction, nine months later we were cleaning up from this, the remnants of Hurricane Fran. It's not often a hurricane packs such a punch so far inland. Trees were uprooted, power lines were down, some folks didn't have electricity for days. If a hurricane can do all this here, you can imagine her destructive force along the coast. Well, uh, hurricane forecasting as well as severe weather forecasting has improved dramatically over the past few years, complements of lots of new technology. And one piece of that technology is, of course, Doppler radar. We're fortunate here at Channel 12 to have our own live Doppler radar that we, of course, have showed you over the past several months. And this obviously is a clear scan tonight because there's no precipitation around. But uh, the principle of Doppler is such that uh, we send a microwave beam of sorts out from uh, here at the station and that more or less bounces off of rain droplets and the return echoes are what shows up on the screen in terms of rain intensities. I want to show you a couple of features with this Doppler and you've probably seen it if you've watched us much. Uh, we can zoom in on the scope and uh, kind of hone in on any uh, specific area where all of the action is so to speak in terms of severe weather or just thunderstorms for that matter and even take a little closer look, uh, uh, zoom into street level type mapping. And uh, again, uh, without anything actually showing up on this screen tonight, 
Obviously, it doesn't look really impressive, but I want to show you one more feature, and bear with me a second. I have to punch a couple of buttons. We can do what we call a storm tracker. Assume for a minute that we, say, have a thunderstorm approaching Richmond. You see a little box right around Richmond. I can set the parameters here on the computer, on our Doppler computer, and get it all set, and the computer will analyze the storm movement and actually tell you where these storms are heading over the next uh, 30 minutes to an hour or more and give you the communities and the time we can expect them to hit those areas. So this is a very useful tool in addition to all of the satellites and other equipment that we have here at the station to help uh, predict the weather. But more importantly, severe weather watches and warnings that you see so often coming on your television screen originate not from here, but from somewhere else, and Tracy Caps has more information on that. Tracy? That's right, Jim. Uh, as you mentioned at the top of the show, one thing that we want is for viewers to be more prepared when severe weather occurs. And one of the most important things that you and your family needs to know is the difference between a watch and a warning. Now, it may be a severe thunderstorm watch, it may be a tornado watch, but a watch means severe weather is possible. A watch is issued for a large area, perhaps all of central Virginia or all of eastern Virginia, and it's issued for several hours. The weather may be beautiful outside when a watch is issued, but nonetheless, severe weather is possible, and it means that you may see some severe storms develop. If those storms do develop, that is when a warning is issued. Now, warning means that severe weather is occurring, and it means you need to take shelter. Warnings are issued for specific counties, and you need to know which county you live in and pay attention if you're in Henrico County, if there's a warning there, or if there's a warning in Chesterfield County. You need to take action and, and seek shelter. We're going to give you some safety tips coming up, but again, the most important thing to remember is think of a warning kind of as a flashing red light. If there's a warning, you need to seek shelter. Of course, we're going to let you know whenever there is a watch or a warning posted, but what happens if it's the middle of the night? If it's 3 o'clock in the morning and you're asleep, what are you going to do? Well, that's when you might want to have one of these. This is called a NOAA weather radio, and you can pick one of these up at Radio Shack. They cost about $40 or so. They're programmable, so you can set it for your county, and it'll go off sort of like an alarm clock. If there's severe weather in your county, this will go off. You wake up, turn on to NBC 12, and we're going to give you the latest on whatever is going on. Again, NOAA Weather Radio, you can get that at Radio Shack, and it can really be a life-saving tool if we are in a severe weather situation. Good for homes, good for schools, good for businesses too, so you might want to take that and keep that in mind. Warnings are issued from the National Weather Service down in Wakefield, and Tal White went there and filed this report. National Weather Service meteorologists in Wakefield pour over climate data, computer guidance, and radar to give them an edge on predicting damaging storms. Before the thunderstorms are developing, we're looking at what the meteorological conditions are over, say, the entire state or the entire mid-Atlantic region and trying to assess whether those conditions are favorable for thunderstorm development or potentially severe thunderstorm development. The National Weather Service uses a two-fold system for getting the word out about severe weather. The first step begins with a watch issued by the Storms Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma. A watch means that conditions are favorable for severe thunderstorms or tornadoes to develop in or near the watch area. It also means a meteorologist in Wakefield keeps a watchful eye on the Doppler radar. A protective dome surrounds the rotating 28-foot radar dish. Now that radar dish gives the National Weather Service here in Wakefield the ability to see 240 miles out. And that means they get the earliest warning of severe weather. We then sort of take a, a more observational mode and go very closely and work very closely with the radar uh, and let it tell us whether individual storms or a line of thunderstorms, for example, might be severe. Once severe weather is spotted on Doppler radar, the Wakefield Weather Office issues a warning. A warning is an immediate call to action. They're issued on a county-by-county -county basis. They're issued for a time period from say 15 minutes to 45 minutes generally, and they are a product that says people need to take action to protect life and property. Samler cautions that regardless of whether a severe thunderstorm warning, tornado, or even winter storm warning has been issued, it means the phenomena is imminent and you need to take action to protect yourself, family, and property. Tal White for NBC 12.
Well, don't go away. Coming up after the break, we're going to have some safety tips for you and exactly how do we come up with the weather forecast. We're going to talk about all that and much more coming up next. In the past 40 years, nine hurricanes have hit Virginia. Even more have torn through the Carolinas. And it's hurricane season again. Hi, I'm Jim Duncan. If you'd like to follow this year's storms, we'd be glad to mail you our information and tracking chart. Just send us a stamped, self-addressed envelope, or find the chart at NBC12.com. Hurricane tracking charts are provided through a grant from Virginia Power. We're very pleased to join our friends at NBC12 in promoting hurricane preparedness throughout Central Virginia. Oh, hey, by the way, while you're at the marketplace. Enjoy Winn-Dixie's delicious U.S. choice beef. Now a whole semi-boneless ribeye is a sizzling hot buy at just $2.98 a pound. Save again on Harvest Fresh White Potatoes, a low $1.98. 12 packs of Coca-Cola, Diet Coke, and Sprite are two for $4.98. And pick up Colgate Total Toothpaste for only $1.98. While you're at the marketplace, Win dixie Marketplace. Alphabetically. Introducing DivX, the best way to watch movies at home. DivX delivers brilliant digital picture and sound. Build a home video collection for only $4.50 a movie. Avoid that mad rush to the video store. No returns, no late fees. One less thing to stress about. DivX. The best way to watch movies at home. These pictures are a painful reminder of how a tornado can tear families' lives in a matter of seconds. These pictures were taken April 1st when a twister tore through Hanover County, killing a 39-year-old woman and her 13-week-old son. The tornado leveled their home. The foundation is all that was left standing. If a tornado warning was issued for your community, would you know what to do? Welcome back, everyone. I'm meteorologist Steve McLaughlin. Of course, tornadoes don't happen often in our area, but when they do, it is, of course, a major problem. Tracy talked about it before, what a watch and a warning is. We're going to take a look at what causes a tornado. Keep in mind, this is still something that most meteorologists don't completely understand, but we do have the basics down, and we're going to try to show you that in our animation. We'll begin by taking a look at a part of the country called Tornado Alley. Very much west of here, this is the area that gets hit with the most tornadoes each year. The reason why the Rocky Mountains sit to the west down to the south, the Mexican highlands, south and east, the Gulf of Mexico, and to the north and west, including parts of the United States, the continental United States and Canada. Basically what happens is warm and moist air at the surface rides up from the Gulf of Mexico into Tornado Alley. A little higher up in the atmosphere, we've got the hot and dry air coming over the Mexican highlands. And finally, we add a jet stream from the Pacific Northwest. It rides up and over the Pacific Northwest into the Colorado Rockies and up into Tornado Alley. The combination of these three things is very important as to why we get tornadoes. Add to that that there's no water anywhere nearby and we've got tornadoes basically six months out of the year for that portion of the country. As we take a side view, the warm air rises as it explodes through the cold layer way up high in the atmosphere. We get tornadoes spawning from these thunderstorms and that is how we get tornadoes. Keep in mind that again, this does not happen in our part of the country frequently, but it can happen at any time and that is why whenever we have a severe thunderstorm watch or warning, we do put the possibility of tornadoes in. If you are caught in a tornado, if you hear a watch, a warning, anytime in the near future, stay away from the windows, go to a tornado shelter, basement, or bathtub. Cover yourself with blankets. If the windows shatter, you don't want to be out in the open. Do not use your telephone, computer, or electricity. And stay in pairs if possible. That is the biggest tip. You don't want to be alone when you're caught in one of these situations. Now, of course, tornadoes don't happen frequently. As we saw from that last video, they can happen. But more importantly, something that does happen on a weekly or even daily basis at this time of the year is lightning and thunder. And Tracy Capps is standing by at the weather wall now with more information on lightning safety. Tracy.
Yeah, thanks a lot, Steve. Uh, you're right. A lot of times we do hear about uh, different uh, tornadoes that hit and the destruction, but we don't hear that much about lightning. Well, certainly we have uh, one local resident who knows who knows a lot about that, and it's a 12-year-old Nicholas Mitchell. He uh, he knows all about lightning. If you remember, he was uh, actually these pictures were taken during a band concert in Hopewell back in June. It was the first time Nicholas had returned to school since being struck by lightning back in May. It happened while he was changing classes. Now, Nicholas was very lucky. Um, the fact is that more people are killed by lightning than tornadoes or hurricanes. And a lot of times we tend to forget or we think we know all of the safety tips, but it's good to review them from time to time. And the most important thing, if you're outdoors, get inside. It may seem kind of obvious, but especially remember, if you're swimming, if you're fishing, if you're anywhere around water, you really need to get away from water and get indoors. Don't stand under a tree, though. If you cannot seek shelter, Lightning tends to take the shortest path, and you don't want to be next to something tall. If you're near that tree, then certainly you might get struck by lightning. If you're out in an open field, don't get flat, but just crouch down. That'll be your best protection. And if you cannot get inside, a car, not a bad place to be. Get inside the car, make sure the windows are shut tight, don't touch any metal, and that's going to be a pretty safe spot for you to be if you cannot get inside. Now, if you're indoors, you're not quite out of the woods yet. Still a few safety tips to remember and, of course, avoid water. During an electrical storm, not the time to take a shower or a bath. Avoid water and also avoid the telephone. Uh, certainly it can come through electrical lines, through telephone lines. Stay away from electrical appliances. And a real good thing to remember is the 30-minute rule. Don't go back outside until 30 minutes after you hear the last clap of thunder. That's kind of a good safety measure so you know, hey, it's okay for you to go back outside outside and to resume your activities. Review these from time to time with your family, especially so your children can remember. Uh, right now, Daryl Kern is standing by in the chat room with a little more information for you. Hi, Daryl. Oh, that's good stuff, Tracy. And uh, we go through great lengths to uh, provide you with all the information that you tell us that you'd like to have. And we recognize the importance of the internet to everybody. So as a result, part of my job here at NBC 12 in the weather department is to provide content on our NBC 12 website. Let me show you some of what's available to you online. When you go to NBC12.com, you can not only find the local Richmond five-day forecast, you can get a bay and beach report. And uh, included in this page, we have uh, local conditions, live conditions, I should say, of temperatures, say, at Virginia Beach, Nags Head, Myrtle Beach, uh, Salisbury, Maryland, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Uh, there are also lots of links for marine forecast. Hurricane information is available here as well. Virginia Beach and uh, Outer Banks information. We also have our severe weather page on the website, and here you will find find uh, links to hurricane tracking maps, also lots of information like links to the National Hurricane Center, El Nino information and more. So what's available, the five-day forecast, you can see our Skycam images updated about every five minutes, Virginia Doppler radar images, and of course the severe weather information I told you about. You can also get information by calling our Call 12 line at 345-1212, then press option one, you get a recorded forecast for Central Virginia. That phone line was pretty busy last month, as a matter of fact, more than 40 thousand people called for that number for the forecast. We'll be back with more, including a look at the Arby's school net. Hope you'll stay with us. This is the event. Those are the vehicles. That is the place. These are the days for the factory authorized clearance at your neighborhood Ford dealer. Save big on Windstar. Get low 0.9% financing or $1,500 cash back on the first minivan to earn five stars in government crash tests four years in a row. The savings are right. The time is now. This is the event. Those are the vehicles. That is the place. Your neighborhood Ford dealer. Clayton Allen talks about the power of family. A young girl was at an amusement park and the attendant started the ride. The safety bar wasn't down. The child fell forward and was very badly injured. I was able to get involved, help them with the medical treatment. And by the time that we got the court to approve the settlement, we were fast friends and she was doing great. Call Allen and Allen and put the power of our family to work for your family. It's August, and as you would expect, the hottest grocery specials in town are at Community Pride. National brand names you know and trust at down-home prices that are right in your neighborhood. That's Community Pride's commitment all year round. This week, save on Marushan Ramen Noodles, seven for a dollar. Post Oreo Cereal, two for four dollars. And Hunt's Pudding or Juicy Gel Snack Packs, 99 cents. 
Community Pride, our name says it all. A typical car insurance agent is on the job during regular business hours. On the other hand, GEICO insurance professionals are on the job 24 hours a day. GEICO, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Paying too much for car insurance isn't any smarter. GEICO, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. These are just some of the uh, students who are learning firsthand about weather in the classroom thanks to a special partnership between NBC12 and Arby's. Together we've installed computerized automated weather stations just like this one in schools across Central Virginia. It serves as a good teaching tool for education, educators and gives us another window on the weather which is very, very valuable. Welcome back to our NBC12 weather special. The RB SchoolNet is just one of the many pieces of equipment we have uh, handy here to help us forecast the weather. This is a live depiction of what's happening here at Channel 12 now. This is the same type of image that is generated at nearly two dozen schools across Central Virginia. We're all linked together and it's just a phone call away. We can get all of the weather data from the schools and bring it to you live here at uh, Channel 12 during the newscast. We're very proud of our relationship with the schools in our communities via the SchoolNet network, and uh, we hope to be adding more schools in the near future. We use these, uh, this weather data, of course, to help us forecast the weather. And with more on how we prepare the weather forecast, here's Steve McLaughlin. Steve? Well, you know, Jim, just a few years ago, most of the equipment that was coming in here was all maps. Everything was printing out on a daily basis. Not only was it bad for the environment, we were wasting a lot of paper, but it was really hard to read and it wasn't really instant. Well, we just spent a lot of money on brand new computer system. And if you've been watching over the last couple of days, you've noticed some really neat graphics. We went to great lengths to make these graphics look good, catch your attention, and give you the easiest forecast. But what these computers also do is provide a lot of information that wasn't originally available. Now, of course, we all know about national radar, local radar. Jim, of course, talked about Doppler radar. Well, what you're looking at right now is the most important tool, something we've been using for about the last 10 years, and this is the radar. And very simply, this shows exactly where it's raining. On top of this, we have more updated satellite imagery. And of course, with the timeline at the, at the bottom, you can really see where and when the clouds are moving to and from where the systems are coming from. We've added a new feature with this new system, and that's animations. We can really tell you what direction the weather is moving in a clear, crisp fashion. And this is just one example of an animation you might see in the wintertime, rain and snow. This really helps you understand very well where the weather is coming from, where it's moving to, and why it might be happening. We also have animations like the jet stream image you see here. We were never able to do this before. More importantly, though, we're adding segments that may not be important to everyday weather as the radar or satellite, but certainly may help in your day, like the school day forecast, an example here of the recreation forecast. We've also added a segment that tells you what's going on around the country with the travel forecast that you see here. And finally, another segment we're adding, Friday night football. It's too early in the season for that, but when we get closer to the fall time, we'll include Friday night football. And of course, we have the five-day forecast, the 12-hour forecast, all that good stuff, and we'll be showing you that over the next couple of days. You're watching NBC 12. We'll be back right after this. I know you're in there, Miss Plum. I can smell your recently delivered pizzeria pizza. And while I'm appalled at your wicked little plan to lure me into your tawdry web with the promise of a deliciously topped pizza, Miss Plum, I am but a man, weakened by the siren's call of a well-risen crust. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. She wants me. For fresh-baked pizza at home, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Meet the Haggerty Triplets, Rebecca, Robert, and Reed. Three little angels with three big appetites to feed. All three love cookies, bananas, and pears, though sometimes they end up in Robert's hair. Thank goodness their parents know the best place to shop for the foods these kids like. Food Lion is the tops. They have the lowest prices on cereal, milk, pudding, and more. All the foods kids love to eat or throw on the floor. Food Lion, we don't think it's funny to waste time or money. Get ready to save a cool 10 to 50% during Heilig Meyer's Spectacular Summer Savings. 10, 20, 30, 40, up to 50% off select items store-wide for your living room, bedroom, dining room, any room. 
This three-piece dual recliner sectional with full-size sleeper and free recliner is just $15.99 at 32% savings. And make no down payment and pay no interest for 90 days. Summer savings at Heilig Myers. It's spectacular. I love the store. Donna and Greg's Real Life Loves on the next Entertainment Tonight. They're TV's hottest couple. Now meet the Mr. and Mrs. they're married to in real life. Then find out which TV angel has been touched by scissors for a heavenly makeover. <laughs> it's just a different look. What? Just when you think you've seen it all, we're bringing you some of Soap's most sizzling, most scandalous sex scenes to hit TV on Entertainment Tonight. Entertainment Tonight, tonight at 7.30 on NBC12. You probably heard about our tracking charts, hurricane tracking charts. Well, Daryl Kern is standing by in the chat room with more information on how you can get your copy. Daryl? Indeed, Jim. I'll do that in just a second. First, let me tell you what's inside and uh, take a look. You see this pamphlet's got uh, Jim Duncan's smiling face right on the cover. Let me show you what's inside. Hurricane tracking chart, of course, is one valuable tool you might want to have around. Hurricane preparedness, stuff like know your evacuation plan and assemble a hurricane supplies kit and tells you what to put in it. Securing your home tip on purchasing flood insurance. Also, hurricane history across Virginia. Now, here's how you can get yours. You can call 345-1212 and press Jim for more information to get the uh, hurricane tracking chart. You can also send a self-addressed stamped envelope to WWBT Post Office Box 12 in Richmond. And you can also visit our NBC12 website, www.nbc12.com, and you can there uh, download or print out your very own uh, hurricane tracking map. And we want to thank the folks at Virginia Power because they had a big hand, Jim, in uh, putting that together. All right, thanks, Daryl. What will our weather show be without a five-day forecast, right? So we're going to leave you with a five-day forecast. The next several days looking like more of the same. We're going to be looking at upper 80s to near 90 degrees for high temperature readings, plenty of sunshine, nighttime lows going up a little bit because of increasing humidity expected over the area. Well, we certainly hope you learned a little bit uh, about uh, how we operate over here at the NBC 12 Weather Center. On behalf of all of us here, Steve, Tracy, and Daryl, and myself, of course, we thank you very much for watching this weather special. Good night. <laughs>